Hey everyone, I look a little disheveled and I took out my earrings earlier. I didn't really plan to do a live. This is, <laughs> this is the problem. I got home, I had a little extra time and I thought, hmm, I haven't done a live this week. I don't know if I did one last week. I can't remember now. Everything's kind of blurring together. It really is a struggle to figure out what day it is. I think it's Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. So I'm Carrie the Mortician. This is live coffee with Carrie, where you can ask me, if it's really windy outside, ask me any questions. Hey, everybody. Hey, Leo. Hey, Anya. Hello, everybody. Uh, hey, Joshua. Um, and so you can ask me any questions during this segment about funeral directing and the funeral business. This morning, I recorded a podcast with um, Rachel and Andy from Eternal debate. And they are from the UK. It was so much fun. I think we chatted for like two hours. Great questions they had about, you know, differences between the UK and the US and just everything. It was a great, great, great discussion. So, hey, everybody. Good to see you all. Good to see you. Oh, James, that's just wicked cool. I love the whole burial at sea thing. That is one area I have made connections and just not been able to do a video on yet. So yay. Avalanche. Yes. I read your email today and I scrolled that idea away so I can look at it to see what is going on in that one. Um, Mikos is asking, how difficult is it to embalm an autopsy body? I think it's almost more, it's easier because the body is open. The vessels are right there. You can inject all your areas um, decent, quick, and it's just putting them back together. That's the restoration of it. So, um, I think though, sometimes it is easier and it's almost nicer when there's been trauma and stuff. Cause you can get in and see what's going on. It's, it definitely is good. Thank you, Jeffrey. Hello. Hello. Um, have you seen the through graves that's going viral on TikTok? No. What do you mean the through grave, the see-through graves? Um, do you mean, I think they're either Asian or South American in the pictures and they're just showing the top of the, it's almost like a sunken top of a casket with kind of glass or plexiglass that you can look through a little window. Is that the ones you're talking about? Oh, Paris. Thank you. Okay, so some questions. Can you, is it possible to poke a hole on the backside of a deceased when aspirating? This is where that main question comes from. Can you hurt a dead body? Yes, they're, they're not going to bruise. But you can definitely rip skin, puncture skin, cause damage to the deceased. Yes, you can puncture through the back of the person, the side of the person when aspirating. I don't know that I've ever done it. I'm trying to think back to even like early days. Sometimes you miss gauge depth and you just hit or all of a sudden it busts through an organ or something and it slides past and it might hit the backside. Typically, you really don't bust through because the table's right there of the tissue um, but you, you can, you can puncture the skin in a place you don't want it to be punctured. You can hurt a deceased. You can tear skin. You can, yeah, definitely do some damage, uh, which nobody intends to do, but sometimes does happen. Jessalyn, I don't know what KSU is, but now I'm a little embarrassed. Like there's people watching like a crowd. I don't know what a crowd means if that's like four people, but <laughs> Hello, everybody at LSU or KSU. Where did I get LSU? KSU. Is it like Kansas State University? Is that where we're talking? I need to know now. I would love to come to Washington State, Linnell, Washington State, Linnell. I'm Guys, I'm not joking. This COVID brain thing after COVID. I had COVID first week of the year and it is legit. It is like there is a fog haze. My brain can't, receptors can't connect to each other. I feel like tipsy all the time without drinking. It is crazy. 
Oh, Jocelyn, yay, it is Kansas State University. Well, hello over there, guys. Um, can you tell me why my mom's green eyes turned yellow when she died? Because eyes turn color. Um, they will get hazy. They will film over and they change color. Brown will change down to blue a lot of times, but they do. They change color. Carol, I'm doing good. Thank you. Yeah, I never lost my sense of smell or taste. Um, at work a couple days, we've had some decomps recently, and I've prayed and wondered why I didn't <laughs> lose my sense of smell, but I never lost it. So, Desiree, yeah, I think COVID brain is even worse than the new mom brain. Worse, a hundred times worse. It's, it's, it's crazy. All right. What are some laws regarding identification? So I think this question means like, does the body have to be identified with a tag or something throughout the whole process? Do they have to be buried with identification? There's no laws or regulations regarding this. A lot of funeral homes will put like an ankle bracelet. Toe tags just don't stay on very well, but an ankle bracelet, wrist bracelet, sometimes they will write the name and Sharpie on the ankle of the person because it won't readily wash off or rub off quickly. So it just depends on the funeral home, what they use, that they will identify that person often in some way. Not all funeral homes do, but quite a few do. When it comes to military funerals of those who have fallen in the line of duty, does the receiving funeral home have to do any prep work or any cosmetic cos casketing work? Not typically. Typically, they're received how they're going to be shown, if they can be shown. How many years of education before becoming a licensed mortician? That's about three years plus a year of an apprenticeship. Hello in Alabama. The interview with that embalmer that was unreal, who was doing so many embalmings every day. Great interview. Oh, with Matt. Yeah, he. Uh, you get some trained embalmers. So there's a trained embalmer I work with right now. She is amazing. She is almost, she's, I think eight and a half months pregnant right now. And some days she's doing upwards of like eight bodies a day. Like it's unbelievable what she is accomplishing being full on pregnant, had a sinus infection recently. Like she, but there's no choice right now. We're going through a huge death spike there's no choice. It's kind of full hands on deck. Everybody just dive in and just be work, 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 working. Lately, like today is my first day away from work. I feel like in, I don't even know how many weeks. And I said, I have to take this day. I have to get some stuff done at home. I have to get some of my YouTube stuff done. I just have to, it's crazy. Can a family member watch an embalming? Uh, not legally in terms of the legalities of the state. Typically, you have to be a licensed apprentice or an embalmer to be in the preparation work room even. So even if somebody wanted to let you, you're technically still not legally allowed to be in there. Are the laws different for cremated remains crossing state lines? Yeah, there's no laws. You just drive on with them. <laughs> um, have some paperwork, but there's you don't need to have, there's no laws about it. My cousin died of COVID a week ago, but they said we can't have an open casket. I don't know, Pedro. There's no reason if it, nothing with the COVID should deem you not to be able to have an open casket. Absolutely nothing. 110% nothing. Any favorite coffee brand, Carrie? I do love Pete's Coffee, but I've been, so Meyer is a local, like, big grocery store place here, and they just have a bold Meyer brand K-Pod that I've been drinking. It's great. I like rich coffee, not super dark, but just a full body. It's kind of like how I like my wine too. I don't like dark and oaky or anything. I just like nice full bodied, but kind of middle of the road, low acidity, middle of the road, just good mm, flavor. Yeah. I guess that's it. <laughs> Where do I go to find the laws on becoming a funeral director in Georgia? So you're going to go to the Georgia Mortuary Science Licensing Division, and they are going to give you all you need to know. You're so welcome, everyone, for, for the information. A bold flavor. Yeah, Roy. Really, I, 
I like a, a good, strong, but not acidy flavor. Oh, Danielle, you've inspired me at 35 to start my journey. Yay, that's awesome. Well, I'm here. If you need anything, if you have questions, shoot them at me. Throw them at me. So I'll post yesterday that said to put your family's cremated remains into an hourglass so they can still attend family game night. That's an actual thing. Like that, that little meme has been going around, but it's an actual thing. You can buy an urn that kind of does that, except that hole needs to be big enough because the granulars from cremated remains can be pretty chunky. That it's not just going to fall down if it's a super small little hole. So just need to be granular, processed down enough. <clears throat> Do you cosmetize before placing the body in the casket? I would think because of the risk of spilling in the casket, you would do that. Yeah, most of the time, cosmetizing and then placing in the casket and then doing touch-ups. Just because then you can move to both sides of the deceased, where if they're in the casket, you're really only getting one perception when you're looking down at the person. And I like to move from side to side to make sure every angle is looking good. I've never done anybody that would be deemed famous. Can you over pre-plan? I think you can become obsessed with thinking about your funeral. Yes. Whether you want to call that over pre-planning, I don't know. Do you have to be licensed to dress a body? No, not in the states I'm aware of. Okay, I will try a Kona type coffee. That sounds good. Would you do an overview of how embalming chemicals vary? I did do a two minute on that. What changes in the body do you look for morning of the funeral after the visitation the night before? Any purging, any darkening, eyelids poke, popping open and the seal not staying, mouth popping open, uh, anything like that that is noticeable when you walk up to the deceased that needs to be corrected before the family comes in for that last viewing time. What's my favorite brand of beer? Example, beer with the boys. I don't know if I, I love Line and Kugel. Line and Kugel is by far probably across the board one of my favorite beer companies. I would love to go up to Wisconsin to go to their headquarters, like the, you know, actual brewery. That would be so fun. Hey, Line and Kugel. I wish that I could cross brands a coffee with mortuary <laughs> or a beer with mortuary. How could we get that done? <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? Um, I like darker beers. So browns, ambers, porters, stouts are almost too heavy, like a meal in a cup. Um, but I do like a little darker beer. What is the best way to get an interview with a funeral director? I'm planning on writing a graduate research project about the local funeral industry. Yeah, we are busy, but if you get your information in there and try and connect with somebody, invite them to breakfast. Invite them to coffee. Coffee, breakfast, food, that's straight to anybody's heart. So you're going to buy some time by being able to do that. So I would recommend, you know, offering to take them to a meal or buy a drink or buy some coffee or something like that. It's going to get you in there. I'm here if you need help. Connecting. If you need somebody to interview, I'm here. The plan is when my father passes, my mom's cremated remains will be placed in the casket. Would you need special permission to do this? Or can we put them in? Nope, Pedro, you can put them on in there. I'm just having my morning coffee with you in New Zealand. My question, have you had any particular bodies or situations that left you feeling traumatized? Um, Wow. I don't think I've had anybody phrase it that way to me before. I don't know if I've ever felt. Um, the first time I saw a deceased who was a donor, a tissue donor, and they basically were like a stump left, honestly. Um, their torso was there, but all of their tissue on their back was gone. Their head was there. Their hands were there connected by some thin pieces of tissue their feet were there connected by some thin pieces of tissue. There just was nothing. And that really stuck with me how much is taken during that process. And yes, it is a necessity, 
But when that is what is received back for the funeral, and we have to like try and put that into some semblance of form for visitation, we're basically building up the arms, the legs inside plastic under the clothing to formulate a body for the family. So there's a lot going on there. I'm not saying at all, don't be a donor, but the first time I really saw the, the invasiveness and how much they do take, I was pretty overwhelmed for days. Still thinking back to that feeling was a lot, a lot, a lot. Does a mortician have the right to deny a person's wishes? Only if it's illegal, really. I find they're charging too much for a funeral due to the coronavirus in Trinidad and Tobago. So are they charging additional dev because of the person having corona, which that here is illegal. You can't do that. Um, but in your country, it may not have any, there may not be any governance for that. Have you ever been to a cadaver yard? You mean like a body farm? I have not. It's on my kind of wish list. <laughs> I, Jada Marie, I am feeling a bit better. I'm still super congested in my head, my chest. So still lagging quite a bit, um, which is hard. I haven't worked out in a couple weeks, which is mentally that is doing a lot to me because I work out every day. I do something or some form of something for 30 minutes every day. So that's been really hard. Yeah, a tissue donor family should bring long sleeve clothing, high neck, like normal neck clothing, um, long pants, socks, things like that. And they should be instructed for that by the funeral director that meets with them. But yes, they should. Would you agree that besides a cemetery worker, an embalmer is the hardest work in the funeral business? I think that that's, um, you know, defined hard. Um, physically, yeah, it's, it's probably the more labor intensive, but hard mentally sitting, meeting with family is hard. You know, all the areas have hard. So I guess it's what, what area of hard are you thinking? In a place investigation, they have to dig up a body that's been buried for a number of years. What's the process to do so? Uh, Trent, that would go through, uh, be called an exhumation, and you'd have to get a court order to do that. And the funeral director would be present. And most anywhere I know, the funeral director has to just oversee the body, and they would be brought up, taken to the medical examiner's office, typically for another autopsy, um, and then reburied. And there's, no, yeah, there's going to be smell. There's no way to know. It just, it could, be a varying plethora of situations when you uh, exhume somebody and you do a disinterment. At my brother's funeral home, he puts them in a baggie in the casket. Oh, okay. The identification of the person. That would help. Is it illegal to have your pet's cremains put in your casket but to be buried with you? Judy, Judy, um, did do I have this one pegged up on my thing? I should because this one, I'm going to have to ask, add that one because that really is one of the big questions people ask me. I'll have to add that one to my main thing. Um, it depends on your state. Check with your state laws if that's legal or not. Can you or would you be willing to tell me the steps in moving my dad? He's in Connecticut and I live in Pennsylvania. So you have to find out who oversees and if a funeral director has to be present. Typically, you're going to go through a funeral home. Then you have to do the paperwork and petition the court or the health department. And everybody with equal next of kinship has to agree and sign the paperwork. You have to pay for the permit. Then they will schedule. So if they can disinter the whole vault and move the whole vault intact, not open it, not have to disturb the casket or anything, you can do that. You're going to pay a company to drive that and move it to the new cemetery. Any part of this is not inexpensive. This is a costly endeavor to move someone from state to state, cross country, any you know distance. It is a costly thing to disinter and move somebody. 
So if the vault has breached and you need a new vault, you're going to have to pay for vault disposal. You'll then have to pay for a ca reef casketing, disposal of the old casket, a new casket, a new vault, the new cemetery space. So it can add up very quickly and there is a lot of unknowns going into it. So you're going to hopefully just be given a worst case scenario of the highest end of everything that you're going to have to hit. And then thankfully, you know, if along the way, thankfully, okay, we don't have to open the vault. We don't need a new casket. We don't need this. Then you will be deducted down, but it can be a 10 to $20,000 endeavor easy to move somebody. Okay, Olivia, so if you want to bring him up and have him cremated, you're going to be dis paying for disposal of the vault, disposal of the casket, and depending on what kind of casket he was in, and then the cremation. So you're going to be, and the vault company, the cemetery, things like that. So you're, you're going to still be paying a good amount of money to get all that done, but it has to go through a funeral home. Does an internship start after you have enrolled in school or after graduation? Your apprenticeship in many states, you can't do schooling and an apprenticeship at the state time at the same time. You may be doing a practicum through the school with a funeral home at the same time, but not your apprenticeship. Is there anything that really um nope? What are some things to consider when choosing caskets to display in your funeral home selection room? So oftentimes the casket company will give recommendations of the history of purchases at your funeral home as to what to put. They'll put things that are a lot of them in that mid price point where people usually buy and a nice neutral range of caskets. And then they'll put a few high and a few low. And that's typically how they build out your selection room. Have you ever been inside of a casket? No. Have I ever received a faulty casket? Some with like dents or scratches, things like that, that we've had to send back. Okay. Can you half cremate someone and half bury? No, we don't cut people in half or half cremate them and then pull the rest out. That's no. Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you guys. Hello in South Africa. Have I heard of an open bar? If you know, yes, uh, it's very common. So I received a Christmas card and I just want to give a shout out because I don't have this person's email to Tracy Gettys Reynolds who sent me a sweet little card and a little pin. And you've been through a lot this year. Thank you. Thank you for thinking of me and reaching out to me because you endured a lot this last year um, from what you shared with me. And I'm very thankful for this. I got quite a few Christmas cards and things this year. It was super sweet. Um, so it was nice to receive those in the mail. And actually, Joshua, you sent me the um, chocolate hot chocolate stir things that had the marshmallow inside. My girls did, there was two. So my girls got to do them one day and they thought they were the coolest thing like ever. I think that was from you. Was that from you? Am I like spacing out? Is my brain failing? But Joshua, I think that was from you. My husband passed away from COVID. His wishes were cremation, but we did have a family viewing before cremation. He was not embalmed. When I saw him, one side of his face was purple. Yes, Tammy, we're, we are seeing a lot with people who have died of COVID, a very fast, very quick darkening of their face, especially very, very poor circulation. So dark ears, dark lips, very dark and blotchy, very common right now. How many people choose to not be embalmed? Thinking about this and research the pros and cons. Um, it depends if you want to have a public viewing. The funeral home may require that you're embalmed if you want a public viewing. So that's one thing to consider. It really just depends. Um, I would say, yeah, I don't even know. It's out of 100, maybe about 50%. Are being embalmed, maybe 40. Some are doing direct burials, some cremations, but some people are being embalmed and cremated. So I don't know. It's it's kind of all over the place. 
How many states have the water cremation? I think it's at like 14. I actually just looked this up earlier. And if I'm remembering correctly, it's legal in 14 states. But that does not mean all those states have facilities for it. It just means that type of a body disposal is illegal because there are universities that use that for cadavers, like donated bodies and tissue samples and things. Um, so it's legal in 14, I believe, is what it was. Um, there to keep water out of a casket. I mean, if you got water, you got water. Anything in the world standing in a foot of water is going to breach at some point. It's just mother nature's going to win. Um, you can get a casket that has a seal on it. If it's metal, wood caskets never seal, but metal and water, metal submersed in water, it's going to win over time. So it just depends. What state did Aquamation start in? So the first machine was in Ohio, in the Cincinnati area. <clears throat> Have you ever had a casket leak during, before, or after? No, I've never had a casket leak during the process of a funeral and burial and such. Um, never had that. Those tree cremations, are they protected from being dug up or cut down? So <laughs> you mean when they're a little potted, it's a little sapling and you put the cremated remains in the base? They're, you're not going to want to go bury them out in a forest without permission. That's still own land owned by somebody and you need permission to do that. You can't scatter cremated remains, let alone bury them on any land. And public land, like a state park, is still owned by the state, so you still need permission from the state. So if you bury them in your backyard or something, they're going to be there, and you can oversee them until you move. So put them on your own property. When someone has had an autopsy, is their brain put back in the body? If the brain is returned, it goes in the viscera bag in the abdomen. Would you recommend natural burial if it is allowed? I don't ever recommend anything. My opinion, these are those are opinions. They're not based on what I think is best because of being in the field. This industry is based on personal choice opinions. If you want a casket that has a seal, get it. If you want one that doesn't, get it. If you want a vault that has a seal, great. If you want one that doesn't, your choice. It's all about personal choice. There isn't a, a best scenario for any one person. That's why there's so many variety of options because there's so many opinions. Many options for many opinions. You have to do what is right for you and your family. Are mausoleums mandated to be constructed to withstand earthquakes? I don't know that there's a mandate for earthquakes, especially in areas that don't have earthquakes. Um, I think they just have to be constructed to a certain level of strength or, you know, withstandedness, but I don't think earthquakes are factored in. When someone is obese and they want cremation, do you have to use lower temperatures for a longer time? It does take a long time um, to cremate someone who is a certain size. And you do, the machine will kind of, the flame will power off and power on because it regulates on the temperature. And once the fat on the body starts burning, it kind of is burning. It's self-fueling, if that makes any sense. So you don't need any flame. You don't need the machine to be generating heat because it's already getting hot on its own. Does the body need to be aspirated? Um, well, decomposition begins in the gut. And so you really have to address the gut to get to the root of what's happening within the body quickly. So aspirating is a really key element of preserving. If you decide to donate your organs, can you still have an open casket viewing? Yes, you can. Um, it is a very, very small percentage of people that can actually donate organs. You can donate tissue, 
Um, most people can be donors for tissue, but organs are a very, 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 very small percentage of people that can actually do that. Been watching for a while. Thanks for making the death process easy to understand. How come they make everyone leave the viewing room after a service? Um, Craig, they, I don't. I, I don't know a lot of embalmers or directors who really still do that. It's kind of the super old school way of doing it. Is the retort preheated before the person is put in? <coughs> Sometimes. It really depends on the size of the person, what they're in, um, and such. So, they may need to be put in a cold retort because of their size and because of the temperatures and things. So, all right, I'm going to cut this short today because I'm still, I get really, my throat gets really dry and I start coughing and stuff if I talk for a long time. But thank you guys so much. Thanks for showing up next Monday. So what date is that? The 24th around five-ish Eastern Standard Time is when I'm going to be going live putting together the bookshelf from Fiddlehead Casket that is a, also a cast or yeah that's also a casket so it is a wooden unit that can be a bookshelf when you're live and then changed into a casket so I'm going to be putting it together live with a mortuary science student she's going to come over and help me with the camera and just with putting it together. So we're going to put it together into a bookshelf and then we're going to transform it into a casket. So we're going to see what happens. We'll chat about mortuary school. We'll chat about the business. We'll try and answer questions as we're going. It'll be kind of hard because we'll be working to read questions, but we'll do our best. So join next Monday evening right here. You guys have been waiting for this video. So it's coming next Monday. Thank you guys. And I will see you soon. Bye.